other sides. Uh, then uh, he says, the plot, the characterization, time, scholarship, linguistic knowledge, plus local Vaha, all these together, uh, uh, when you look at uh, uh, all these uh, things putting together, when you look at Ramayana, then you see the other angle. You see this thing in a different perspective. That's what uh, uh, Seshan Samagaru actually uh, um, uh, 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 felt through the creation. So I feel that today's lecture is on Auchitya. Seshan Samagaru has shown a kind of Auchitya, proprietor actness by, by creating such a work. And also, contrary from the conventional uh, uh, feeling that Sundarakanda is a step to Anwa. He says, Sundara word is not a step to Hanuma, but Sundara is Tripura Sundari, something like that. So the meaning came coming from uh, Lalita. So uh, something is always uh, uh, very innovative in thinking. Uh, that way, people like us have to learn many, many things uh, from all of his uh, creations. I think uh, it is very hard to have a, a lecture in his uh, memory that is kindly endowed by Tashkwari Nandas Indirati Vipadhyayamkirji. Then, this is what I can say, it is like a uh, um, uh, Pushpanjali to the great uh, Sishanta Samagaru. Then, about uh, today's speaker, Sri Navajyoti Ji, uh, as much as I know, in 1990s, early 1990s, he was, the, he was one of the founders of the PPST Foundation in Chennai. Uh, uh, patriotic people oriented science and technology, along with some of the professors in uh, Chennai. And also, I think the centre now is converted to the foundation is helping Anna University to uh, conduct research in a centre called, uh, in the same way, PPST in Anna University. Recently, the company about this. And also, he is a very good scholar in Vaisheshka, being a physicist, uh, educated from IIT Kampur. Uh, I know him for the over a decade. Uh, in 2007, we have conducted a workshop on Vaisheshka formal anthology uh, uh, for a long time. Department is in uh, association with the Institute, and now he's heading the Center for Exact uh, Humanities and Tripoli. He's a visionary person uh, 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 who sees uh, something always uh, uh, innovative in Sanskrit uh, Shastras that can be applied to the contemporary society and contemporary issues. Maybe uh, uh, currently he's working in uh, uh, Natya Shastra and related uh, things. When I look at his profile and uh, the publications, all of his students are working in diversified uh, uh, context uh, and himself is interested in uh, this kind of uh, things. Uh, one of his students uh, uh, fondly uh, wrote about him like, uh, he seems like a wide-eyed Einstein. So, so, these are some of the things uh, about his uh, him, about uh, his uh, students. There is a Gonochit uh, with these two words. Yeah. And uh, lots and lots of Ochit, uh, which are there uh, in any composition, etc. And uh, even having this uh, event itself, all kind of Ochitias have come together uh, for uh, making it possible. So the uh, term Ochitya, in the sense of something being uh, apt, is, uh, uh, is really open. Uh, one can be apt in the sense of uh, small aptness, uh, apt in the sense of uh, the aesthetic kind of aptness. in the sense of uh, realization of truth. Uh, so, the term aptness is a very broad kind of term. And uh, Shimendra sort of brought it to understand the nature of art. So, he was a prolific poet. Uh, 
I mean, some must have played. Thirty-six thousand of his girls are available today, and not available another fifteen thousand for him. So very prolific kind of poet. But I am not going to touch on his poetry at all here, and uh, see him or uh, his thought more in the sense of um, uh, a theory of art, and uh, to take him as a thinker more than as a poet. And uh, to do that, I want to bring in uh, two kind of contexts which were there. <coughs> to, to appreciate the kind of thinking and uh, the moves uh, which are expressed by his, uh, his concerns and his writing. One of the uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, there is, I am going to place it in the context of one very uh, sort of uh, deep questions ever since the beginning of people, beginning of theorization about art in Bharat as well as uh, in other uh, concerns about what really is art. One of the things we strike about art is that there is some kind of removal every work of art has or every act of art has from reality. Sort of uh, remove yourself from some reality and uh, then construct some kind of work of art. And uh, but this removal is not an ordinary kind of a removal. Uh, it's a removal which is accompanied by artistic act. What really is artistic act? Artistic act is always accompanied by some kind of uh, sort of corporate shimmer, uh, some kind of chamatka, some kind of wonderment. All removals from reality, all kind of uh, say imaginary uh, removals from reality are not really art. The ones uh, which have some kind of accompanied by a kind of awe and uh, wonderment, chamatka. They, uh, those are the ones which are uh, artistic. And he introduced Ochitte as a cause of that wonderment, as very causal kind of uh, understanding. Uh, as a kind of current of uh, various alankas, rasa, etc., all kind of uh, wonderments and uh, which are there with uh, work of art or act of uh, art. These wonderments uh, have certain causal bearing, and he introduced the term Ochitte as the cause of that. We so. We will actually see what we mean to be a cause of work of art. Uh, and uh, it's a very specific uh, move which he has made conceptually, very specific kind of thing. So, to uh, the aptness, like what we popularly uh, see as uh, aptness of, a, of any. Uh, so work of art, in the work of art or otherwise also. This aptness uh, is generally understood like in a poem, if a word is uh, sort of put in different order or uh, is based, all of a sudden the aptness disappears. And Shemendra gives lots of examples of these uh, things from Indian sort of poetry and his own poetry also. And uh, where uh, aptness comes and aptness disappears or becomes an apt. Why is it that a particular work of art is uh, good or attractive? Is because there is certain uh, sort of appropriateness in its elements. Certain amount of appropriateness is there among all the elements which are there. And this appropriateness 
is a kind of uh, without which the work of art will lose its longevity, its life, and it won't be sort of uh, having a long life. So uh, there is a kind of uh, exactness in a while doing a work of art. Uh, the appropriateness is a kind of exactness which one finds in art. So when Shivendra is suggesting uh, that Ochitya is, is a founding uh, principle, yeah. Ochitya word like he says, Bhakti is used, and uh, earlier also Ochitya is used for Yukti's Nayapen, Ochitya is used for Samad, for Bhumi, etc. in Parani. And we have uh, lots of usage, and Amvardhan has uh, sort of not used or checked, but he is raised it to a principle, a level of principle, not just as a concept. And uh, so I am going to try to develop these ideas of Ochette on the line that what really constitutes uh, accuracy, exactitude in the work of art, in a painting, in a in sculpture, in, in poetry, in drama, etc. So, we will look into two contexts for this. Uh, one is uh, this area, which uh, is called by, say, uh, Kalhan. He is from Kashmir. Shemil is from Kashmir. Huh? Yes, also, but a little later, century and a half later. So, uh, he is from Shemindra lived near Srinagar, and the village also where he settled down, he still exists, I think, in some other hills in Srinagar. But uh, the region which we call as Gilgit, Gilgit, Gilgit. Nefa and also uh, Kabul, Zabul, etc. Uh, and Kanda, Kanda, or uh, Kanda, uh, or this region is the one which is very lively. And this region has been called by uh, a polity of this region, Kalam calls it Shahi. And uh, uh, starting from Kushans, Kushans call themselves Shahi and Shahi. Shahan Shahi. Shahan Shahi. Shahan Shahi. Shahan Shahi. And uh, not even Shakas, also in Jain works, they mention even Shakas. Uh, the people of that region, there is some region which I am going to refer to. And I am calling it a Shahi art. I am looking to it in some details, region, because it's very important for uh, Shimei, or culture, uh, and his thinking, thoughts, etc. And uh, there is some very really old work which belongs to this region, which is Dhanji's uh, Chitra Lakshan, and which talks about, uh, tries to see what art is, and gives certain formations to the people art. And uh, another is another big tradition which Shemendra was, uh, though he wrote uh, in verses, the content of most of his writing uh, were uh, sort of stories, kathas, etc. He uh, wrote summary of Mahabharata, Ramayana, Vedanta, etc. And uh, his other works, Kalavidas. Samyamatrika, etc. All of them are uh, kind of uh, content of his poetry, because by and large, mostly uh, stories, and which connects Shemendra, apart from this geography and quality of this region, to uh, Nartishas tradition. So issues which are raised in the Nartishas tradition, issues which get raised in uh, Ganhar, etc., with Nanjits. These issues he is addressing. This is the context in which uh, we look at him. And then we really go to analysis of what really is his aptness uh, in art. 
and how can we think about it? Let me do some geography. Um, she lived somewhere here, uh, Shimin. And uh, uh, this region between Nefa and uh, modern day, Nefa and Afghanistan, is one region which is present in him, other region which is present is uh, Tibet. Tibet. Some of his works were celebrated in Tibet, especially his work on uh, some of the previous lives of uh, Buddha. And, uh, and then, uh, sort of uh, Gandha region and uh, till around Iran and down south. Uh, this is a region also which is important for him. And uh, Al Biruni called this region here as uh, Hindu Shahi. Uh, cousin had called it Shahi and uh, gives 60 uh, sort of uh, kingships uh, line of this region and uh, some portions. Huh? In Persian, its origin is not known by the internet, uh, but uh, most people believe that it's, it's, it's come from the Austrian background and the hip background. And uh, so I'm not clear about the etymology and this confusion, but this term is popularly used. Kalan uses this. And Dutsang uh, came uh, in the 7th century and met some kings. Which were Shahi kings. And uh, Kadam calls them Kshatriyas. And uh, what? Uh, Al Biruni, who comes at the same time in the 11th century, he calls them Hindu Shahi. And uh, that becomes also popular later on. Modern scholars say no, no, Hindu Shahi is actually Buddhist Shahi and Hindu Shahi. That kind of difference they make. Uh, earlier, we put this later on. We came, so we were trying to look for switch when it happened. But uh, Kanishk is, 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 is one of the uh, some important person uh, who has uh, who's very significant in this decision and rest of uh, uh, sort of this uh, Indian West. Like Sindh and down to Maharashtra, etc. And uh, in this region, something very extraordinary happened, uh, which was real proliferation of art, especially sculpture art. I mean, if at all, if you survey the world, you look at the history of sculptures in Gandha, Gilgit, and Nefa region, uh, it's, it's very high. Lacks and lacks of sculptures were done in this from Ganesh Shakas to uh, medieval time. In fact, terms like uh, Ut and uh, Khanda in Persian, modern Persian, is derived from ruins, ruins which were there. Khanda uh, mm -hmm. is some. Destroyed. Kandahar okay. ah, has become Kandahar because of uh, western side with Baminan and uh, yeah. this is there. Those were uh, become like Kandahar because uh, Kabul Shahi was uh, was defeated from there from 8th century onwards. So uh, and then uh, sort of regions like Hindu Kush, which is uh, Sort of in Nefa, uh, and there are lots of caves there, which were used by the Nadi behind when they were escaping from there. Uh, and they have lots of sculptures in that. And uh, this region was is very significant. And in his uh, Samay Matrika, uh, sort of he is exploring. He calls it a salt, but trading is done. Also, it's called the Bahi, which is which goes to this region. 
and um, this kind of uh, shahi, there have been several of them from Ganesh down to modern times. The last of them which I know is Nanak Shahi. Nanak Shahi is uh, just in 18th century, the empire of NGC. <coughs> Buddha Shahi, who was very large, even getting to Tibet. For instance, uh, Albiruni said that uh, people, Hindu Shahi, are Turks with Tibetan origin. Something like that. Uh, so some people in this place are very confusing. But nonetheless, uh, there was this region which was full of art. And if you look at uh, so maps I try to find out about it. These were the uh, Tapisha was just next to Kabul. Tapisha, etc. is next to Kabul. And uh, these are some of the sort of uh, Kushan, late Kushan structures, uh, political things. And uh, yeah, this is like uh, 6th century. Map somewhere from internet I got. And this is uh, quickly made kingdom of uh, uh, Ranjit Singh. Uh, it was just done in two, three years. And uh, it's, it's this region, Shahi region. And this Shahi region was also a British called it uh, Marshall region. And uh, so people, army, etc., taken from there. And this is a region which has never been occupied. A lot of people came there and lived in these regions. And uh, you know, exemplary occupied North Food Americans or Russians. <laughs> Seems like it's known as a very uh, sort of uh, a region which is very ferocious. But that is just the background you have to give. And it has something to do with, uh, I think, Even the founding of uh, Hyderabad. And because the Shahis are formed in Rajasthan, like the Kshatriyas, there are a lot of Muslim Kshatriyas which are there in uh, Pakistan, except for Rajputs, and in Gujarat, and uh, like in Sindh, etc. Uh, for the last three, four centuries, most of them are Muslims. And, uh, more than that. So, Qutub Shahi, etc., is also related to this region. This region was very significant in terms of Central Asia, in terms of uh, East Asia, etc. It played a role, very significant role, for a very long time. Lahore is part of it. Yeah, Lahore is part of uh, Shahi. Yeah. So, uh, and it is uh, sort of we take it like an Islamic term. No, it is not. Like Nanak Shahi is, is that. That's what the Ranjit Singh called it. Sapluj was a border. He took a bow that he never crossed Sapluj. Uh, and from there till as much as you can go up, the Dagestan was his. Uh, uh, and it could be easily done because this is a Shahi region. And it had many people. But now this is a, just history. Actually, this Shahi thing is due to the Persian invasion. Before that, uh, Buddha Swami, Kumara Jiva, Kumara Jiva is a person who translated uh, uh, Prajna Paramita Hridaya Sutra into Chinese, Chinese, first first into Chinese. Follow me. So, all in China, all Buddhist uh, temples, this is, that is what is sung, even today. So, this is uh, the Shahi term is actually after probably 6th or 7th century. Before that, it is only Kusha. Because uh, uh, the Maharajiva was actually a prince born to the Kashmiri Buddhist uh, father and a Kusha uh, princess. And he was born in uh, today's uh, Tashi. <coughs> yeah, so, this, what I'm saying is, this term should be seen as an Islamic term. Just see this term as an Islamic term. No, no, no. Yes, this term was there in Persian in by the same. Before that, Shaharatas. 
So uh, I'm just intimately, I mean, this is, a, uh, this is something one has to look at history of words and things like that. I don't know much, but one has to look at, at least in the contemporary Indian context, to see it as a pre Islamic. Yeah, yes. Actually, Kusans, Kusans used the title yes. Deva Putra Shahi Shahan Shahi. Right, right. That was the title of Kaniska. Title of uh, Kaniska. Deva Putra Shahi Shahan Shahi. Shahan 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 So this term, Shahan Shah and Shahi are the pre Islamic terms. They were there in Avistan. They are there in uh, linked to Sanskrit, yes. These these are political formations which are pre-Islam, and they're known like that. But this region is little known. But Shivendra is uh, one of the interesting things Shivendra sort of says. Uh, he wrote on the Shatta issue, the issue, and it's very difficult to understand uh, and that the tenth convertible issue. You don't know converted in the sense father is no no the father there were many you can be part of many sampradayas he was committed pressure and in his writings the shatta is it's very difficult to understand how does that come this will explain that how does that come so uh, this is uh, sort of knowledge from Ganesh uh, time this Vishnu so you get uh, Bhagavad uh, inscriptions, mm -hmm. uh, inscriptions in Greek, for instance, in Sanchi. You get uh, when some Greek is written in Greek. So there is a uh, lot of Vaishnavism of very old time, from the 3rd century, etc. Oh, this is written here. It's written in Greek. So now the Greek is written Greek. Vishnu is written. There are some Indo-Greek rulers who became Vaishnavas. Huh? They are called Indo-Greek rulers in history who became Vaishnavas. I mean, I am going to relate to the spread of art. The idea is yeah, to led thing. to surgeons of very artistic societies. And uh, I mean, this was. Uh, so you also have uh, Buddha there. This is a uh, large sculpture or that region sculpture. Uh, I think most important was the Gilgit region. Uh, but uh, there were both the presence of uh, uh, so Vaishnav, Shaib, as well as uh, Mount is there. And uh, this kind of uh, work of art is something uh, which is extraordinary and happening in a very big scale, massive scale. For instance, uh, this is probably the earliest uh, uh, Ganesh. It's a very old Ganesh. Uh, because most of the iconography of much of, you know, say Mathura, uh, down to even South India, yeah, has, uh, has origins in, in this region, in this Shahi polity, in that region it has origin. So uh, this is uh, Linga, both are there uh, in Gabu, and this is supposed to have been established by Kanish or some other Kushans. So, uh, there is a very uh, important understanding, uh, kind of important for understanding Shemin, why he uh, tried to look at uh, Vishnu as a uh, also of uh, Buddha as a Dashapta. It is known that the earliest Buddhist text, uh, main script, the earliest written thing about this has come out of Gilgit. It's according to it was Gilgit, which India could have had. Somebody just decided in one hour India could have had that application there. But uh, it's there in Indian map. Gilgit is there in Indian map. 
you know the 1913 mm -hmm. finding of the Hobbit manuscript, the huge yeah. Galatina manuscript. Got looted into by three politicians. Russians looted it, the English yeah. looted it, and the Japanese looted it. So people are trying to get them together. These are the ugliest writing. Mm -hmm. And Thave uh, Madhav are the people, uh, uh, outlook. Many denominations came in Buddhism as a time passed. Uh, but they were populous once upon a time. And uh, in Andhra and things like that, uh, it became Theravada. Excuse me, I saw a book like this. Not Sculpting, uh, now sculpting is really something uh, and it's there now everywhere. And probably historically otherwise, it may be that it is now this region, Shahi region, is uh, sort of a lot of sculpting was done. All kind of sculpting was done. I'll show Trent Henry sculptures from this region. Okay, these are some, some of them, and uh, these are heads. Why I wanted to look into heads was because there is this book by uh, Nagaji, which is also available from Tibetan sources. Nagaji, Chitra Lakshan, but it's from Tibetan tradition. We know, know this contemporary time. But there was this uh, theorization about what really is art. So uh, it has uh, something about portraiture. What is a picture? So uh, the wide variety of heads and appears which you'll find, hundreds of them. I mean, this place, in that region, Number of sculptures available, we just keep there in lakhs, etc. And very interesting ones, these are some other heads. Uh, yeah, the Greek, Indian, uh, Greek uh, nationals are there. Greek Shivites are there. I mean, Greek is a uh, language, Greek is a script, like you had Karoshti script. Yeah, Rami is the Greek also is the same. But you have in Prakrit, uh, Titan, and Greek state. And there is also certain uh, confusion about pronunciations of the Greek state. So that reading of that looks very foreign now. So Kanish has a headday from Greek. Before that, Ashok had one. Whatever, I mean, the culture people were. So, whatever it is, we don't know all those details, but these are the things which have been picked up from this region and from Swat region, the local gate, and uh, this Gandhar region. And there are thousands of them. Some of them are very good. And very Greek one is this. this. And uh, so, uh, in fact, many of these were broken to take out these gems which were inside. And uh, 
so there was uh, uh, a that uh, it was run by uh, IG. So the dating is after Alexander's right? Uh, no, most of these are after Alexander. Yeah. Third and fourth century AD. Something, but most of the uh, Shaka is from. But in India, many such things are there. Nakmajit is a Buddhist. Nakmajit is a Buddhist, right? What? Nakmajit. Nakmajit is not Buddhist. There is a Buddhist Ashan. Buddhist Ashan was there. And there is like. Uh, and people participated in these Ashans uh, in the same region. There can be some. So, Nakmajit, we know the Buddhist, his, his book has been preserved by the history. Mm -hmm. Because so there used to be a lot of scholarly debates between Jainas and Buddhas in those areas particularly. Nagnas are generally Jainas. No, this has, Nagnji has a story of different sides in this Nagnji And uh, not in the Buddhas. This is the AD or BC? This, this will be in this. It will be around 6th and 7th century. The absence of this idrosphere shows that they are all of Kushan. No, no, it could be later. Definitely. It could be later. I mean, they are very fine, these ones. But they are picked up from this region. And there are these uh, many caves, I think 50 of them, uh, in South region, uh, which are full of sculptures and shrines. Kushan and later. So, um, the story. They look very Greek, and they are much later than from the Greek times. Early Greek times. So uh, it was there when we were So uh, the story there of the origin of art, I would tell, because this is related to what we want to think about. Uh, there was a kingdom in which uh, it was a very broken kingdom of uh, IG uh, because nobody ever died in untimely death. So one day, uh, one child died, young boy died uh, for the promise of love, future, etc. Just died and uh, sort of uh, the pain. Brahmin went to the king and said, No, there must be something wrong with the Ponti. Because uh, something wrong with it, the Ponti, that must be led to this death of God. So he was very perturbed by the consulted everybody. What's wrong with it? So he couldn't find anything. Why this is happening? So he went to Yam directly and said that, I didn't tell me what's wrong with the Ponti. All return the war. And uh, there was a war eventually. And uh, so the Yamraj has only been mass in every place. We don't have money. Because in uh, Sparlo, we don't have bodies like that. So uh, Bhaji was fearless and he kept winning. Uh, and uh, when uh, Brahma saw this, that uh, you know, he disturbed and that architecture of the universe, because Yamlok is defeated, and uh, this can't happen. So he took it. And uh, looking at him, he was his fire. And uh, both sides had to give their rational. Yamlok tried to tell that. Tell him, I don't decide. I just only explain. I just don't know. Explain to him. Something. So, Brahma said there is one way out. You cannot get back that boy again in the same boy. But you can get back that boy in another boy. So, uh, he took sort of new body. For him, was canvas. 
and uh, made a portrait which is, and put him uh, a soul in that portrait. And uh, that was the first painting constructed. And then he told uh, uh, Rajiv, Normals, you will be called Rajiv, who has conquered over uh, all these positions, etc., the Pandok. And uh, he knew, uh, he learned about all the lakshanas of making painting, all the objects. Go and learn from Vishwam. How to, all the techniques, etc., and proportions, other things, all the objects. How do you, how do you sort of paint a person? Uh, so that it's very apt, as if the soul is there, like, of that person. So this was the beginning of uh, Lakshan Shastra in arts. That time. And Ochityas are the ones with deep reductions. So if something looks good, there are certain lakshanas here which has made it which it is there that's why the image is good so more images yeah these are like uh, like the thinker Murin you know that's a thinking posture like a king thinking yeah or uh, People talking to each other, contemplating. Uh, so there are many kind of uh, ochityas you will see in this. All these ochityas are natural. So uh, Brahma asked him to learn Lachishas from Vishwama. So, but this was uh, and in that, it was uh, Many of these are here. But it is up to artists who actually have budget. So uh, even like look at this kind of thing. It really is in thought, very relaxed kind of thing. So the image which it is giving, the soul which it has, is caused by those options. The way legs are put on each other, the bend which is there, etc. This is Bodhisattva, but this is not, this is a king of uh, kind. Similarly here is uh, the way hand is kept, etc. This would be, uh, there is an object in that, so it captures the soul of that. Hmm? I mean, he has a so bushes, which is very expressive. That's like everything. Okay, let's look at this. These are also another uh, uh, kind of like with these two hands here. This kind of humility which is coming out of this uh, image. Uh, you all this, all this, you already have I mean, in many cultures a kind of greeting of humility by touching your chest. So that this is this object here. And uh, similarly this not only that everybody was sort of having uh, that uh, uh, humbleness. <laughs> but there is some kind of something you're trying to help. So doing something from there. The posture is is giving expressing meanings. Uh, which are uh, very different kinds. And uh, so, as if you are trying to not hurt something there, the posture is like that. So, these are you uh, sort of object is involved in constructing these, uh, these uh, re embodiment. The embodiment is that you have uh, sort of uh, some kind of uh, uh, departed parlok where only facsimiles of things live. 
bots that they are supplying. And all the people die in the Twitter group. And which is uh, our background, all of us have. And uh, out of that, you get, give a new body to that, to recreate something. So the kind of humbleness of both the sex is created. So this is that there is some uh, meaning which you can uh, panoramic meaning. So all new things, the sense, uh, are have origin panoramic meaning and giving them some action to action certain new body, the embodiment. This is what work is. In fact, work is generalized and say all work of art is the embodiment of departed things, of things which are not there, like physical. So they are engraved into objects, even artifacts are there. So let's look at the original question. Now, what really is this wonderment which uh, a removal from reality is all the departed people, all parnotic existence is a removal from reality. And in this removal, uh, you can create wonderment by embodying it, re-embodying it, giving it a new body. And these are attempts to give things new body. So art is that kind of, we thought they even said that imitation. Uh, you needed something to re-embody it, give it a new body. Now this was, this is what? What? Yes, to actually give. A lot of artists, you have given it. Initiate as artist and also complete the work of art. That is that embodies. So, so uh, with this uh, kind of background, we can now ask. Uh, if you look at the Bachanas, they are they are the Ochitas are given. Like Chemidra himself uh, for uh, Dafa etc. He gave 27 uh, kind of objects. But uh, similarly, it can be done. And a question can be asked what really is, how does one in art really capture, capture in a sense, embody into some material formations? How does one embody uh, some reality which is removed from the reality which is given? Some kind of removal from reality and still speak of good beauty and truth. So, uh, let's go to the next. Okay, so here is I'm going to be another story. This is like uh, the Sahaja was trying to give us to the contemporary object. So, I'm going to give a whole story uh, in a new language. Language. We will have basic uh, garlic object. So, uh, Shemendra began his Machitra uh, Vichasa uh, with the uh, Mangasara, in which uh, he said, you know, Dharma Machitra of all of is Vishnu. Taking a shape of Mohini and uh, deceiving Shiv and Vajras. That's, that's the only one is good. And here at this Kalavilas, that is from, uh, I'm taking that situation, that there is. Kind of uh, element of not. You know, when we are looking at uh, those cultures, we don't see not in. We see characters of people, largely. And there are some characters cultures where you can see some drama going on. But uh, in this Vachitya Vichar, even all poetry for him is a kind of story. And because uh, in the beginning itself he is hearing that story. 
and to such a issue and there is a paramount involved in it. And uh, so he wrote uh, most of his poetry were life stories. So you can now take the next step, go towards from Chetu Lakshan to Nartishas to understand what really is object. His Kalavilas uh, is a very interesting uh, book and uh, it's about uh, art of pretense. According to him, there are 54, uh, 54 arts of pretense. 52 or 54 arts of pretense. Why pretend? There is this removal from the second reality. It's very significant. He has done it here also. From Vishnu, Mohini is moved and the drama is there in that. And Mohini is Vishnu. And uh, so uh, this book begins uh, with the story, I'll just tell the story also briefly. Uh, there is a sort of city somewhere, and the city is uh, locally famous because. In that city lives a request of a cheat or a thug. A thug who lives uh, is a great, I mean, looks like a child of uh, cheating, etc. And uh, there is this one man who has made lots of uh, money and wealth. He is very worried that his son is such a fool. I mean, because he is not know how to earn money. The rest of his life, he is going to waste that money of mine. And people are going to fool him. So he goes to that uh, sort of uh, that of a poster, Achara, etc. Goes to him and gives sort of Nejara, etc. to him and says, Please accept this foolish son of mine as your student. And teach him what is what is uh, thuggy. What is what is thuggy? What, how do you cheat? Uh, what happens when you cheat? I mean, this guy should know it. So you uh, teach him that. Thinking that there is a lot of money involved in it, he can continuously sort of take money out of this man and save it. He accepted. And uh, his mode of teaching was that he would tell his story to his students. So the first story, uh, I will tell the first story. The first story uh, is that Brahma created the universe. And after the universe is created, he was, uh, he didn't have anything to do. He was getting very bored. And uh, so, but then he got uh, anxiety that let me peep into the world. Peep into the world, peep into the world, how is it going on? Which I have created. So, but he resisted for a while. But eventually he couldn't resist, so one day he just peeped into the world. And he was aghast. What he created and how the world is going uh, in a different way. And he was very aghast. But whatever, you know, such. Uh, that these occur in, in Brahma, that becomes reality. So, all of a sudden, uh, whatever happened when he looked into the world, uh, something was born. And this thing was called Dham. And uh, so, as soon as this new entity was, thing was born, uh, or the life was born, out of that, you get. Uh, just for a moment and run So, anyway, Brahma was very perplexed. In the evening, they were having a meeting on the human sector out there in this assembly. And they are talking about some mighty things about the world. So, 
Yeah. All of a sudden, this dumb this boy, he just came there. The assembly was there. Everybody was there. Narad was there. The first one. Everybody was there. Talking about some serious things. But then, he, uh, he just came and stood there. By that time, he decorated himself with all kinds of songs. Flowers, he put, all kind of. Uh, in fact, the first verse of uh, yeah, first verse in that cha uh, cha uh, is about. He doesn't say Mohini. He says that we should just put a a kajal so that you could end the deception. And there is Paramachitya in that. So similarly, he did swam or kind of thing, painted himself and this that, and came and stood there. Like this, waiting for Brahma to say please sit down. And uh, so looking at this, the entire assembly went into depression. Who is this character? I mean, behaving like this in Brahma. They all felt like we haven't done something for us well. So seeing this depression in the assembly, Brahma said, Oh, don't worry, he is just born today. Okay, come come here and sit on my lap. So he just walked to Brahma. And before he sat, he took some water and sprinkled it on his thighs. Just to purify. He's going to sit. He sat there and then told Brahma, Do not give it to my body. Looking at this again, on the assembly, he felt very depressed. Who is this character talking so? Strangely with Brahma. And uh, so looking at like this, Brahma again thought something was wrong. So he said, look, I mean, I don't think the soil look is good for you. Why don't you go to Brazil on this dump? And the uh, dump immediately got up. I was also thinking the same thing. And ran. So again, there was this little one up with the drama. And uh, then he went around the tree. <coughs> like a satellite, and saw there's a lot of vegetation, this that, but one one tree is really coming up like a burger tree outside that. And it just stands on its own. So Dhamb went in this city. Then he saw that in the lake there is one uh, sort of crane or Mulla Burger which is standing on one leg as if doing the passa and waiting for the fish to come. So he said, this is good pretense. Just went in there. Then saw many teachers, etc. the was many people who were saying, ask me anything, knowledgeable people, I can tell you what it is. So look at those pretense he went in there. He then went in saw the shopkeepers, whoever was coming to shop, these people were asking the customers, how are you doing okay, trying to engage them, but their basic interest is to sell. So he, uh, he got into them. Then many women folk, you know, they would come, they talk about each other, see what happened there, all kind of things. He went into that. And then children would say, uh, they were playing some games, pretending to be, to be say, police. And we went into that. It sort of entered everything. So much so that some scholars were talking. Uh, which is most Rapa? Brahma or Brahma? Dham. The world. Who is more Some scholars were 
to discuss such things. This is the first story. So, uh, so this is uh, it's not at all like it. This story is not what is known in modern times in black hair. Not at all. It's just created that space of uh, diffusion in which things can be said. Like some removal way. And uh, many things one wants to know from this. The book goes on, it has many more stories. And it talks of uh, into two arts uh, of, of uh, various kinds of dimensions. Huh? No, Kata Sagar, this is uh, Kalavilas. So, Brahat Katha Manjari uh, of Hills is about uh, that's for Peshachi language. So there may be some, huh? Maybe some local language. Well, we have Peshachi, we have uh, Katha Manjari. Well, Katha in Tamil. Tamil version, the two Tamil Samuels. The two Sanskrit Samuels, both Tamil Kashmir. And, uh, but Peshachi was a language of Stavya Badans. The Bautas. Staviras, who lived there. And Theravada was more in South India. So, uh, anyway, okay, this is Kalavilas, this is Dham. So, this thing looks like this. There is some object in it. It could be very neat, very slim, I think. Okay, now it's completely serious. So, uh, Aujitya Vichar Sarsha is a main book. He looks at all kinds of poetry and works on uh, 27 types of Ochita and Ochita distinctions, discriminations. And uh, he cites all, all, all kinds of uh, poems. Actually, these are 37, these are more like syntactic, these are more uh, contextual mm -hmm. kind of Ochitas. The poem yeah, has one or many of them, uh, any poem, any poem which, is, which has some ornament in it have uh, alankas and Prasad etc. would have uh, uh, few or one or some of them. These are chitas. And he classified that all kind of poetry and showed that how really is uh, that something which is to do with Vishishan or something which is to do with Dhyaya etc. or us uh, alanka or whatever is to do with Sabhav or uh, Kudo Chitra family, etc. All these things are there in that, in which uh, he has sort of all kind of uh, words are being, you know, that negative example is there, and positive example. For every object, there is a negative example and positive example. And uh, negative examples involve everything in Bingo. It sort of involves Kailas. Why that would be Versus that involves many um, traditional sort of great people, including his own writing, Ali writing, Ali poems. He says his dad goes also. So, if one works into details now, this is like detailed work. On uh, there is uh, the specificity of object. In a poem, you can have many. Yes, you have like. We were saying there is a one object between Shemra and Shemin. They are rhyming in some sense, political. So there are many such things which one can see in the world. 
and some poems stand out because they have certain object uh, as a highest as the object has also related to uh, in some future in some so uh, this, I, this I just put to show that he did a very fine kind of work. I think a uh, very fine kind of work, which is there. And the poets would appreciate this much better. These are types of it's a pity song. Oh, something like linguistic or non linguistic. Yeah, it's but the Vinjana Ashuk is here. The Ashuk is here. That is just his mind is here. This is, this is like, I put it, uh, these words here, and this is actually, uh, these are the sequence, the order is his. The order is his. After uh, Nipat, Nipat or Chitya, it also calls it. The order is his. Uh, it's like, see, the term for Chitya, earlier, uh, lesson, like Chitya. Because a uh, reasoning which is apt, <coughs> like in our very situation, we need, we need a, many factors, we need an apt reasoning. So, uh, is it possible for you to give us a quick example no, just to motivate us of subculture? Sub no, I can't do it. I don't know about it. I have actually, this is the project, the project. I can't do that. It's a the one after the project. No, I won't know. I won't know an example of that. That's my preference, something that emotional kind of property. Subfront is also mind and argument. Yeah, but you actually look at the example which is given. This book is available. If you look and people who like poetry can appreciate it. Is it possible uh, to classify these auchityas like linguistic or non-linguistic or uh, based no, on no. the syntactic or semantic or pragmatic or discourse? It, like, you can try doing that, but uh, there is certain order in it. So if you look at uh, yuktis, it's like tantra yuktis. In tantra yuktis, there is certain order which is put. The 36 of them are there. So, it's, it's like that. Okay. You can rethink it, you can place it in some corner, you can use the buffers. So it's like Bharata's Natya Shastra. Uh, hmm? In Bharata's Natya Shastra, yeah. the different uh, uh, the different things are uh, you know, uh, explained or expressed. In the same way, is it like that? Yeah, this is uh, because there is this Ankar or uh, Kavishas revision which is come. It is not directly uh, So within that tradition he is talking about. He is basically building after uh, Anandvardhan. Anandvardhan tried to say that uh, Rasa is, is a real soul. And that's if you get some kind of uh, what I call Chamatka into that. Behind that is some dhoni, which is getting expressed at that point. He sort of tried to change it. Instead of such a reality called dhoni, which is there, uh, he is substituting that with object. No, no, Bharata is very old, 2000 years old. Anand Gordon is uh, teacher of uh, Abhinav Gupta and he learned from Abhinav Gupta. So, uh, Anand Gordon could be his contemporary. Yeah, Anand Gordon is 7th century. After Anand Gordon, you have uh, Mamata Bhatta, Vishwanath Kaviraja. After that, only Shaiman Kaviraja. 7th century, you see? 8th. 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 So, uh, but this is like an actual example is given, like you are asking, where is Ochitya Anochitya, discrimination is made. And this can be applied if you do modern poetry, anything. Because one sees, so what uh, Chimendra is saying, that 
the Karan Pradat of Russian Spati is uh, object. Uh, and uh, Dhani cannot be a Karan Pradat. That is, that is what Achyata Darshan is. We found it. So, what really is uh, I, I wanted to give one more example, but there is time. Huh? So, we will skip this example. Uh, this is about, I wanted to make a distinction between come to this point to understand Achitya, how Achitya plays a role in Nishpati. That is in Natasha's tradition, if you are doing some performance in sector, there are these Samajak or people Rasics, who are uh, sort of uh, appreciating that from all this audience. So the purpose, one of the purpose of all the directors and performers is to actually create certain rus in actual rus in in this audience to have that and the causality how is people sitting here on the stage doing something far away there is somebody whose uh, rus is getting created what is the causal connection between them that became an issue and uh, all were addressing all kind of uh, people addressing Kashmir that was one of the main issues. And uh, there were very few points. There was one relationship to point. And uh, how that happens, that phenomena happens. There were other new points also. Yeah, two points. Also. And uh, which Anuman happens by inference that this uh, audience is in infinite. That's how you get trust. Or you may not get trust like in modern times. You only have Rasavas. <laughs> you know, that, uh, there, there is a, a difference, and uh, in which one will have that, which one will not have that. Those kind of things are there, issues are there. And uh, so he is giving uh, also the explanation of this. The term of Chitra is involved in also the explanation of how. So, uh, it leads to just uh, 10 minutes, I will give an example. But one example was, uh, which I can give, I give otherwise, the simple one was uh, Tane Zameen. Have you ever seen it? Yeah. This will take two minutes. Tane is a movie. Tara Zameen is a movie of a small child. Everybody has seen it. So, yeah, yeah. So, uh, in that thing, there's one kid, he's a district in society. I mean, school, he can't sort of, he fights with his friends. He's, he can't even go along with his brother. Huh? Yeah. No, no, something like that. Then, something like that happens in that. And that is an uh, interesting thing. And uh, people try to help him, his parents, mother especially. But they can't do anything with him. He's totally missing. And uh, so they leave him in the boarding school for them to take care. In the boarding school, some uh, teacher comes. He understands why and what's wrong with him and uh, makes him uh, great And uh, very artistic person. Because he understands his, his difficulties. Huh? No. No English, totally Hindi movie. And no English, yeah, that's okay. So this is a movie in, in which there's a final scene. There are two critical scenes. One scene is when the mother is leaving the child in body. The child doesn't want to be left. But the child. Another critical scene is uh, in the end, uh, you know, he is really opened up and he's done great artwork. Everybody is very happy for him because he was a little uh, challenged kind of boys. Everybody is happy for him. Everybody is laughing, jumping, his brother, his teachers, everybody. Even the principal is very excited about it. 
was his parent who has come to see him. They have been perplexed. What happened? They were perplexed. But everybody is happy, jumping, screaming, pushing everywhere. But audience is weeping. Audience is weeping. If you remember, you saw this movie. Uh, why does audience weep? Because uh, what kind of inference is more? There are many ways you can inference. Uh, inference, or maybe actually, uh, sort of journey has happened. Or what kind of reason is there in, in that? How come uh, audience is weak? So, uh, I think this is what Shemendra will say. Why is weeping? It's because audience is actually weeping on themselves, not on movie. Uh, everybody is happy there, they show us on each other. Uh, okay. They are weeping because they misjust this boy when he was abundant. They accepted his abundance. Nothing can be done. At that point, they accepted his abundance. Abandonment. They are weeping on this misjudgment. So here, uh, the Rasnis Pati is happening entirely by object. So, close it up. I say communication. Hmm? Communication. Okay, now I'm, this is a summary thing. What is Ajit? There is some difficulty in Ajit. One of the things Shivinda says in the next verse this, uh, is that Ajitya is Adrashti. It's invisible. So, if you say this is apt, I should Keep the hand on the head in this culture. This is the app. You get that sense. Uh, this, the aptness of it is invisible. The hand and the head are visible. So the content is invisible. Uh, content is visible and the aptness is invisible. So people try to chase artists, etc. They try to chase, you know, somehow after should come, when I'm composing a poem, it should come like you, or when I'm making a sculpture, it should come. It's a lot. Or wait for it. So, uh, so this is one trait of Ochit. And Ochit is also a karan. It's a karan pada, a wonderment, a chavatkar, and uh, all the charms which are there. A cause, which itself is not an effect. Ochitti is that cause which is not an effect of any other cause. So there is a certain autonomy in it. Uh, it's like a final cause, like say the Rishi should say, that there is a final cause, uh, you know. Uh, Let's say that uh, uh, it's a cause which exists from the effect. And this I'm using modern term here. It's a reductive cause. Once you get object, sensibility, mm -hmm. or, or some, okay, this is the right thing. You get that. And uh, then the, whatever you do, you adapt your actions. Okay. Once you get this, this is all what has to be done. Or you do things and things look good. So, and Achitya is also Jivit, what Shivan says. And which is, uh, Achitya is literally futuristic. It gives longevity and restores life to artwork, one property of Achitya. If there are Achityas in artwork, it will have longer life. It just adds ayus or longevity of life to the artwork. And then, Achyutya is of the nature of Vivek. 
and uh, it is neutral to whatever content I am involved. It's, it's like it's transcendental from content. Okay. Yeah. Unique is not discrimination. Unique is not discrimination. So you don't discrimination. Or, or uh, the sun is the sun one to cautious. Because we take the Chura, is discrimination. What is up now? What is up? What is the truth? What is apparent? What is real? Yeah, Certainly, in context, discrimination. So, uh, what is the nature of objective? One goes there. Then, in any artistic, this is the statement I'm making. Uh, in any artistic removals, removals is that there is a certain central reality. So, uh, you take some imagination out of it. So you get away from the field. And the imagination you create the act, create a new work of art. So in any such artistic removal, Ochitya Bhavas, Ochitya Bhavas are the invisible and visible portion. That is the invisible portion of it and the visible portion of it. Ochitya Bhavas exist in visible. In any removal, whatever be child's removal, Batman's removal, anybody's removal, imagination, there will necessarily exist Ochitya Bhavas. Not that, uh, given a particular removal, one may not be able to supply anyone. Even doing painting, nothing comes. Even writing poem, nothing comes. No object is there coming out. So, given any removal, in principle, there exists in object. But, given any actual real situation of removal, you may have no idea how to get it. So, this is a formal principle on which object is formed. And uh, so, uh, which means any work of art is the last sentence. Any work of art is a kind of departure, removal from certain modes of existence. And again, giving it back a new work. A new work. And in this process, uh, there are particulars which are known, happinesses which are known. In each discipline of art, happiness can be studied separately. So there are different kinds. What is true in poetics? Uh, similar may not be true where uh, even sounds are not there, or music, or may not be true for some other painting. Okay. Are, those are involved. And these uh, nature of these Vachityas is that they are basically adrashti. But their effects are adrashti. Effects are visible. Which are like you feel good, you feel rash. Rash is Nishpati happens. No. And uh, and we just revel with uh, All the senses, including moral sense, including aesthetic sense, beautiful sense, including sense of truth. And there is certain unity among these objects, uh, and that is uh, this is slightly dicey. I don't know how to do it, but it is some kind of uh, chain, which will be expressible. Some words are not right. I have said if there is a particular removal, where no exact object, I wanted to get to a principle of exactitude, where no exact object of can in principle occur. If there is such a thing, that such a removal, suppose some very strange kind of removal is there, there are no object can ever be formed with it. There is no object of how which occurs. Uh, 
developers. Uh, then it can be shown that in any art, what you think can never be. All arts. So what it is is some formulation. That's it.